Uh, good morning. I'm um, going to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of uh, select sign for quantification, uh, quantification of small molecules. Um, the, if you went to the ASMS in uh, San Antonio, the first part of this presentation will look familiar. Then after that, uh, it opens up to some more recent stuff. Um, Before. There we go. I'll have an intro, some, the, go over the early applications which you saw in San Antonio, uh, the expansion of the use, uh, what I do when I tune for the select sign, and then a brief summary. Um, I think everybody in this room's heard of it. It was introduced in 2011 by SciEx, uh, and it gives you an additional level of separation. Um, you apply a separation voltage, you get some high mobility, then you uh, apply a compensation voltage, which hopefully allows your analyte of interest to go through and not all the other stuff. So this is from the 2017 ASMS, um, or 16, sorry, uh, how to separate the wheat from the chaff from small molecules. Um, the uh, challenges of residue analysis is that you have a tremendous diversity of matrices, uh, uh, anything from cow to wheat to corn to dirt to water. Um, and we have very low LOQs, and they're getting even lower based off of the requirements of the uh, authorities. Um, you have your parent molecule, and then you'll have some polar metabolites as it gets chewed up by the environment, and you get lower and lower molecular weights. So when the power of the LCMSMS itself is not uh, strong enough, you might need an, an additional level of separation. So our first application, this is actually an application that was developed by some uh, uh, competitors at Bayer Crop Science. Uh, there's a triazol task force that uh, we, there's um, some very important uh, fungicide class, but there's a lot of them out there. And so they developed this with the select sign to be able to monitor in the background and all of the companies that have azole fungicides are having to do this. Um, and so here are uh, our bad guys. Um, the triazole, triazole alanine, triazole acetic acid, and triazole lactic acid. Um, the uh, trouble with them was, well, you can see that they're small and they're polar. And uh, the extraction that we use is high aqueous, so there's a lot of uh, tremendous matrix that's being uh, brought into your extraction. And as you can see, they're chromatographically challenged. You're not going to get a lot of separation with the C18. So the select cyanide mobility provides the additional level of separation that we needed to uh, separate it from the matrix. So here's a, I'm gonna go over some uh, quick, quickly because we discussed. Uh, so here's the represented chromatogram. Um, this is just uh, uh, two nanogram per mil, 0.2 nanogram per mil standard. And the, up, the top part is a 5500 without the select sign, and the bottom um, is the 6500 with the select sign. I realize those aren't the same instruments, but at the time we were evaluating which matrices we would need the select sign and which matrices we weren't. We had one 6500 with the select sign, and we had multiple 5500s. So, and I didn't know I was going to be presenting this at the time. So, but this is what I got. So here's the standard. Uh, and here's our uh, 0 0.1, 0.01 ppm fortification corn stover, and it's in water. And you can see that there's a lot of chromatographic interference, some baseline drift, and uh, it's without the select sign. But then you enter in the select sign, and, and it's greatly diminished. It's a lot cleaner sample. So this would be a representative control, and you can see um, that you've got a lot of stuff in the background. And it's also important to note that a lot of these compounds are, they're naturally occurring in the environment. So it's very hard to find a clean control. But when you're trying to adjust for your procedural recoveries and prove they work, you need to be able to accurately quantitate what is in your control so you can determine that you had a good recovery. And so these, um, this is a problem for the TAA because it's, it's there in the environment. Um, so I presented on that, and then after that, I went into some uh, implementation challenges that we went through with it. But then I got one of the, a SIEX uh, um, person asked me, he's like, what percentage of projects would benefit from the select sign? And, and at the time, I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe about 10%. Uh, and uh, I, was, I was wrong. Uh, one month later, I get back, and uh, we got this another small molecule that we're going to try to develop. You can see these are the, the molecular weights up there, and this is uh, 6,500 without the select sign up top, and you can see I've got um, a lot of problems. I mean, this is a control. 
Uh, and then that uh, um, was, uh, you know, an, an issue. So this is an important detail regarding the select sign. It's not needed for every project, but if you do need it, it's a game changer. So we worked for about six months to avoid using the select sign for this project. And you're like, well, why are you, why are, why are you trying to avoid it? You know it works. Well, at that point in time, it had limited availability in the CROs, and we knew we were going to be contracting out a good bit of this analysis. And then there was, since we had a learning curve associated when we implemented it, we were concerned, like, what's the learning curve when we go outside? Is the method going to transfer easily? And after exhaustive cleanup and experimentation in the lab, the select sign was implemented. And it was on a uh, 6500 plus with the select sign. And instead of doing any laboratory cleanup, we actually concentrated the extract and then directly injected it. And then, if necessary, we use matrix match standards. So here is the representative uh, standard that on top with the select sign or without the select sign. You can see this very high background. And this one runs in negative mode. And uh, if you know anything about the 6500 plus, it's much better in negative mode than the 6500. Um, and then when you put the select sign on, look how everything calms down. Here's our control. And you see you've got some stuff coming out. And then in this one, but now with the select sign, it's clean. So the question two at ASMS. Some of you in this room know this man. He happens to be the guy at, in a former life. He was a, he was a field application specialist, and he's the one that actually trained me on this thing. And uh, he asked me at the, after I did the talk the last time, he was like, Jay, how much sensitivity do you lose when, uh, when you use the select sign? And I was like, oh, well, I don't even really know, because we were using an established method, and, you know, we, we, we can see the low standard. We lose signal relative to not having it on there, but we also lose noise, so I don't really know. So that actually, I have to give him credit, and I know the people in the SACs don't want me to give him any credit, but it got me thinking. <laughs> so when using the select sign, yeah, you will, you will lose signal, and you, you will also lose noise. But for many small molecules, you will proportionally lose more noise than signal yielding a net gain in signal to noise. And so what does that mean from a residue analysis standpoint? Well, further dilution of samples, reduction of matrix injected, which is less ion suppression or enhancement. He's, these are our friends from the second application. This is, I actually did a poster on this uh, in 2017. And so these are the differences in the signal to noise that you see with and without the select sign. So you can see we've got 18.7 with it all, with it on, and 4.5 with it off. Uh, big difference here. You, you can see, and the common theme here is that you're, you're, yes, you're reducing the signal, but you're reducing the noise much more. And this is this is unique to, if you were going to do this with a larger molecule. You, you, you're not going to see the same yield, like if you're doing something like fipronil. You, you, don't, you, don't, need, you don't need the select sign. But when, when you go really small, especially if you have uh, your own, a small molecule where it's a carboxylic acid and you're losing CO2 only, that's where it really is a tremendous benefit. So the second application showed us the double bonus. You, you see that we had the excellent DMS separation of the matrix. So from those chromatograms, you saw that, yes, we uh, got rid of a lot of the matrix interference, but we also allowed for, um, we were able to lower our standard curve, which meant that we, we didn't get to dilute here, but we didn't concentrate as much. So it's the same effect. So this application, you know, we had the concern, can we do this somewhere else? It was successfully transferred to a CRO, and over 2,000 samples were analyzed. So the next here we go, we have a registered insecticide. This is on a 6500 plus. This is a pollinator study, so we've got very difficult matrices. I don't know if anybody's worked with pollen before. It's very diverse, it can be very challenging. Um, we had a very low LOQ for this, so we had to go to five PPB, and it was the double bonus again, because you know, one, without the select sign off, we couldn't see that low standard. Now we can see the low standard, and it helped us separate from some chromatographic interferences. 
We also had an herbicide metabolite in water on the 6500. We need a 30 PPT uh, method LOQ. So without the select sign, we needed to concentrate in the lab. Um, with the select sign on, we just put the water in a vial and inject it. Now we didn't actually use that for this method because it was for an enforcement method. And so the method, uh, the owner wanted to say, well, you know, we'll just clean it in the lab. But the, the example still holds in that you know, the select sign had a tremendous benefit. This is one thing that we're working on currently. We can see uh, this one, uh, you, you really, that, that's, uh, one, this molecule is not that sensitive to begin with because you're at 0.1 nanograms per mil and that's a 100 microliter injection. But you can see where, now we can see it with the select sign where you don't have that without it. So we did have, um, one example where we used uh, isopropanol as a modifier, I must, uh, um, this is dicamba. Uh, it's a small molecule. The only, uh, it goes in negative mode and the only um, viable transition for this is the loss of CO2. And so uh, it's got a very high background and, and we actually had Cyx demo this for it before we bought our original uh, Selexine because we, we were, at the time, we thought we might have to do some more field trials. Um, then, and here's what it looks like. So um, this is, you can clearly see that we can even go lower uh, with this standard. This is 0 0.02 uh, nanograms per mil. So I'm gonna go a little bit over the tuning with the select sign. We have the separation voltage, compensation voltage, resolution enhancement, and the temperature and the modifier. Um, the tuning strategy that I use, this is just the way I do it, so I'm just sharing. Uh, what's uh, evolved. Uh, you tee in your analyte uh, with flow and you use a similar mobile phase composition about what you think it's going to elude in and a similar flow weight. Uh, I always use a Q1 scan with the select sign in ghost mode uh, just to check to see that I have good signal intensity. And then you shift over and you use an MRM transition when you're going to use these because if you just use Q1, you actually might have an additional uh, peak in your ramp that you mistakenly pick. Um, and then I acquire them so that I can, not only can I refer back to them, but I can actually send a WIF file to a colleague and say, hey, here's what I did. This will give you a good starting point. And so another thing that kind of, you, you need to let the select sign warm up. So it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get hot to where the, it'll settle in. So I generally now I do, instead of doing the FIA later, I just start teeing it in and I just, while the select sign's warming up, I start going and optimizing for the ion spray voltage and the gases and the temperature. So once I start collecting the ramps, I use little small steps in the voltage so that I get a nice clear picture because if you do too wide a step, you get a jagged thing and you get a really nice picture. I'm gonna have some examples here of at least of one that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, you can see here the WIF file, so I've acquired it um, all into the same WIF, so that way if I'm wanting to look at um, this, I don't have to go and open up each individual file. I can just like scroll through and look at all the separation and watch the molecule as it moves. Um, so the tuning summary is that uh, um, I generally, I'll, I'll use the separation voltage range from like 1500 to 3750. I don't use 4000 because more times than not, I'll end up arcing it out. No, that's not, it's not a big problem, but it turns it off and, and you, now you don't have a run. Um, I, t I test the molecule on uh, DMS temperature low, medium, and high. Uh, I use the D uh, DMS resolution enhancement. I tune it for open and low. When you go from open to low, uh, you're gonna lose, depending on the molecule, anywhere from 30 to 70% of your, your signal. Um, and then sometimes I'll actually look at it and off. Medium high is not, read, uh, is not recommended for residue quantification because you will, it's, you're talking about 90 to then 99% of your signal loss. So when you have a really low LOQ, you don't, yes, you have good separation, but you can't see the molecule anymore. So, and then, you know, you can use the modifier depending on the application. The, the example I showed with dicamba, uh, you're not gonna get dicamba through a DMS cell unless you use isopropanol. So here's an interesting profile. Uh, I've probably tuned around 80 to 90 uh, molecules overall 
for this and uh, usually you'll see a trend upward where you'll have um, the intensity goes up and then you'll see it gradually drop off. But this, this example will show you that, speed it up, yeah, yeah. okay. So um, this is uh, trifluoroacetic acid. Um, this is at separation voltage 2750 and I've got uh, really good intensity at 6 e to the 6. And then I go to 3,000 and it's at 3.7 e to the 5 and I'm like, well, okay, I've got a bubble in my syringe or something like that. Let me go check that again. And I get the same thing again. So I'm like, wow, that's pretty dramatic. So I go to 3,250 and, it, and it's gone. So um, I, that was interesting. That was a very sharp drop off. I'm like, ah, I gotta figure, see what, how fast this drops. And so I went back to 2,750 and then there's 20, 2,800, one third. You, you lose one third, you lose another third and then, and it just, poof, goes away. So that's why it's, I mean, it's, I, I just thought that was fascinating and I didn't share it, so I'll, I'll move on, but uh, I thought it was cool. Uh, the settings summary, in general, most applications have used uh, a low uh, temperature for the DMS, um, and it usually uses uh, DMS uh, enhancement, uh, resolution enhancement is open. Um, don't use modifiers much. Uh, DMS offset is by default. I have seen methods where they've got it at like minus 14, but to me it's a little bit like the uh, collision cell exit potential. It just is like this. Um, and uh, I always tune every 250 volts unless I see something interesting, like uh, with trifluoroacetic acid, and uh, I start it at 1500, but this is a user preference. If you want to do 50, that's fine, but it'll, it's going to take you, each time you punch it, you're, you're going to have to wait for it to do the scan. Um, DMS temperature medium and high are analyte dependent and can be very useful. So I have seen maybe about one third where you actually get uh, a higher signal. The final example uh, is actually that I showed with, that I'm working on now that actually uses a DMS high temperature. And one application did actually use the uh, resolution enhancement uh, set at low. So I, even though I lost like 70% of my signal, it was a very uh, uh, small molecule and it, it made the uh, the background go down enough such that I can uh, lower my standard, low standard concentration. So the method do's and don'ts, you can do treat your COV settings like uh, any other MRM setting. Uh, it, it, it can be set very fast. I think you saw the original thing uh, that we just came from. They're talking about using the, the compensation voltages to, to separate things. Don't treat your separation voltage like other MRM settings. There's a settling time. So if you need like a drastic difference in your separation voltages, you need an additional period. So if you have it down from like 2750 to 3850, you're not gonna have linearity for one of your analytes. Do utilize the whole COV range at a given separation voltage. And what I mean by that is you saw with TFA that there's that whole range is where the, the molecule is getting through. So if you have a chromatographic interference that you can't separate when you are setting at the maximum, you can move away from the maximum compensation voltage setting and, and, and test and see where you get the separation from the matrix that you need. The, in 2016, I, I showed how I used that um, and I can discuss that with somebody if, if they have questions after. Don't acquire COV ramps before it's completely heated up or right after you've cleaned it because a, a cleaner, if you clean it, you've got methanol or water in there, that's a modifier. So the COV will shift as those things go away. And don't, even if, you can Google right now, I just did it before I did this, Google how to clean a select sign on, and the first thing that'll pop up is the SIAX thing telling you to use 600 grit sandpaper. That needs to be taken down. <laughs> Because, and if you want to know how to clean it, if you're interested, I, I also can do that. Um, so, uh, in summary, it's a very useful tool for the quantification of small molecules. Uh, it provides an additional level of separation shown. It improves uh, signal noise for many applications. Um, and the percentage of applications that SelectSign provides a benefit for, well, I predicted 10%, and I was way off. It's actual since 2016, it's been about 40% of the applications applications. Um, the methods can be successfully transferred. We showed that by sending it to the CRO um, and that was covered in this presentation but uh, even more recently a couple of months ago uh, we were having a problem with one of our projects. I went and did the select sign work, uh, did the LC gradient, I sent the damn file and the, uh, the file information 
They typed it in at the contract lab. It worked as is. They had results on Monday. So um, wish list to SciX, select sign tuning can take 30 to 60 minutes. Can we like do some sort of thing where you go check? I want these. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. So um, anyway, um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my, my colleagues at APD EFR uh, and Act Products in our uh, Research Triangle Park, North Carolina, and, and SIAC support, especially Ray and Scott and uh, Paul Winkler is the crazy guy in the pot suit, and, uh, and Daniel Zorzen is our service engineer. And with that, um, if we have time for a few questions, I can do that. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, it's it, after you write a check. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, let's, if we go back to the very beginning. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a box. It, it, you do install it on, it's, it's, um, and you can, take, you can take it off and put it on, but it is an additional device on top. You, you, you can upgrade your instrument Yes. Is that, yeah. And you had two questions? Uh, when you said uh, add, uh, IPA as modifier, what yes. do you mean by adding? Uh, it's, there's a pump on the system where you, you have uh, a, a bottle of whatever modifier you're gonna put in and it actually introduces it into the cell. So, LP. yes, it's going in. And so when you're, when you're setting up your, your method, it actually asks you, prompts you, do you want a modifier? And you can say none in which case the pump will not turn on. But then when you, you, if you select one, you can do low, medium, or high. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.